morning, everyone. My name is Kathleen O'Rourke, and right now I'd like you all to think about what you have planned for yourselves in the future, your job, your respective life, and um, just take a minute to think about what it would be like if you weren't able to attend college and how different it would be. Um, although it may not be completely bad and um, things may work out without a college degree, I think we can all agree that we're came out of price to us, and it's no secret that we're in the midst of a world recession, and college degrees have become more valuable present day than they were in the past. According to Rhode Island Department of Labor and Training, Rhode Island's unemployment rate in May 2012 was 11%, compared to the nation's 8.2%. So that just shows right there that if you all are planning on staying in Rhode Island after you graduate, you're going to have a tougher time getting a job, or it's going to be more of a challenge. Um, this recession has also led to an increase in tuition rates, and according to an article on CNN, college prices have increased by 5.4% since last fall. Um, this leads me to talk about personal finances, and they are a large part of making the decision whether to attend college or even stay in college and graduate. Um, today I plan to provide better insight on student finances by explaining credit cards, student loans, and budgeting. First, I'm going to start off with student credit cards. Credit cards are generally issued by credit card companies, and um, they allow holders of the card to borrow funds and pay back at a certain cost known as interest. Interest rates, also known as the price of borrowing, are higher for students and first-time credit card users. Uh, when credit cards are issued, um, they usually look at a thing called a credit score, and um, the better your score is, the lower your interest rate generally will be. And students <coughs> usually don't have a credit score when you first start out, so they'll give you a higher one just because they don't want to, you know, like risk losing money. It's just basically about risk. Um, and another thing to mention about credit cards is that credit limits, <coughs> excuse me, um, would be lower to first time users, such as students as well, which means that like a person with a great credit score would get higher amount on their cards as opposed to some of the lower credit score, which they'll get around like maybe five hundred or a thousand dollars. Payments usually are made once a month on credit cards or due once a month and there's usually a minimum payment, which is can be like a small fraction of what you would use. So it's important to monitor that. Um, and the United States the United States General Accounting Office reports that 64% of college students have at least one credit card. And next I'm going to be talking about student loans. And there are many uh, different types of loans available for students. Um, repayment of the loans generally starts six months out of college, no difference whether you've graduated or not, or if you have a job or not, they start usually six months out of college. Um, the most common kind is a Stafford loan, and a Stafford loan is issued by the government, it's a federal loan issued by the government, I guess, at a lower interest rate for students. And um, the loans come in two forms. Um, they're su either subsidized or unsubsidized, and the difference between that and unsubsidized is um, not based on need, it's just like they need money for like your academic expenses, like you couldn't find a job or something that would be, or you wanted to live on campus and you wanted to pay for that. Um, and your FAFSA didn't say that you needed financial assistance, but you really do, you just can't for anything else you know. Um, and subsidized is based on need of your FAFSA form. And your FAFSA form is usually filled out um, like once a year around like I think March or April is when it's due. And that just uh, is, evaluates your personal finances and will tell you how much needed you get um, based off of that. And finally, I'm going to be talking about how to budget. And first of all, you should um, plan out your spending for whether for a certain period of time, whether it's monthly or just for the whole year, um, or like a quarterly thing. And it's important that you know what you spend your money on, because um, some people do spend like I don't know. Everyone's different. They spend money on certain things, and you know what you spend your money on. But it's important to just recognize that in your budget, because you're not going to just change. Um, it's important to try to have a part-time job, not only like put yourself um, self 
make payments towards student loans if you have extra money on hand. If somehow if you have a big birthday party and for like some sort of party and you get a bunch of money, why not put it towards your loan? It's what you're going to be paying back. Or anyways, uh, my mom actually has some friends that went to um, went to, for, to school for around like eight years and they're still she's like 50 and still paying back loans. Um, and it's not like she went to school for accounting and. having knowledge and a plan will 